Hello everyone, so, uh, I know, this is a lot of videos in so little time, uh, but, um, I've been meaning to do this video for a long time, actually. Um, I used, to, I don't know if you remember, I don't think there's anyone here from when I studied started YouTube years ago. Uh, I know I deleted most of my videos because um, there used to be a response uh, option on YouTube, which is a shame that they removed it because, like for instance, you make a video and then people would reply to it. And I had tons of videos like this, but they um, because they remo removed that feature, most of my videos at the time became out of context, so I removed about a hundred videos that I had um, at the time, mostly responding to vegans, actually. So it's kind of a return to the original um, topics of the channel with the, the most recent topics mixed in. So, uh, there's a thing um, that I've discussed actually in the past, uh, I think it was in 2008 or through South 2009, that actually I had the uh, video about Hitler being vegetarian and about uh, the, the vegans that supported Nazism. At the time, it was just fully raw Christina and vegetable police, or I don't know. But the thing is, there is a high tendency for people who are vegan to support Nazism and really fringe right-wing conspiracy movements that demonize Jews. I think Ezel Mazard uh, just did a video recently about it. Um, that's why I haven't done it, because every time I think about doing it, Ezel Mazard does put a video about it, and I actually like him, although I disagree with him in certain topics. Um, but uh, for the most part, uh, he has good points. Um, but this topic now uh, was spurred by a video that was actually, and I know I still haven't uploaded my last two videos, but, uh, well, actually, I haven't uploaded most of the videos I recorded in the last six months, but um, this one is more urgent, so it's about that vegan lawyer. Now, that vegan lawyer recently has been putting out some extreme right-wing videos, and I agree to some extent with some of her points, but I think she's too, like, against BLM and all that. She's extremely right-wing and insensitive to a lot of topics. Now, I do believe in free speech to some extent, but I have seen what it does in terms of misinformation in regards to the Holocaust and um, Israel, to Israel topics and anti-Semitism. So there, there is definitely an issue with... Uh, and my cat just... Athena. Okay, so she just... <laughs> Hang on. And uh, I do believe in the in free speech, but people are abusing free speech to spread hate and really dehumanizing Jews and uh, lying about history and scapegoating, and it's really, really disgusting. Um, so that vegan lawyer 
is ang angry because an, uh, a vegan activist group, which I'm pleasantly surprised, actually said that it's not correct to compare, uh, and I also have a video on this about a, vi a video that compares uh, animal farming to rape, and at the time I was really crying in that video. I have two videos. Um, there was um, a, a short film that was called what was it? Norm. And I, I actually was uh, threatened by uh, the authors uh, for criticizing it um, because they compared factory farming to rape and they made the very disgusting short film about, uh, you know, consensuals and rape and it was really, really gross. And uh, um, this video from that vegan um, lawyer really uh, sh shows this. And you have her um, audience saying the media went SGW. Um, I love your analytical skills. And she has removed... Uh, Wait, she just removed another one. So she is deleting comments. Uh, she has deleted two comments I posted so far. Um, where I explain why it's not okay. So she left the one I, where I said, so you delete comments calling out your anti-Semitic bias. But she... She deleted two of my comments where I explain why it's wrong to compare factory farming to anti uh, to to the Holocaust, and then there's uh, a few idiots um, because uh, I say so. You delete comments calling out your anti-Semitic bias. And uh, someone says that uh, YouTube is automatically deleting comments that use the word Holocaust and uh, Armenians could just as easily call you anti-Armenian for trying to gatekeep the word to only Jews. But I didn't even use the word oh, Holocaust. I just called out and said why it's not comparable and why it's dehumanizing. I, I literally said that she was dehumanizing and it was anti-Semitic and I, and I even said it's different. You can't compare animals that are well-fed, uh, that are protected, and the only reason they're killed is because they're eaten to killing people and enslaving them just because they happen to have Jewish blood. For instance, I'm not even Jewish, but I have Jewish ancestry. My blood, my Jewish blood would be enough to put me in a concentration camp. Uh, but that, that's the main difference. There's no reason particularly why we eat uh, pork or why we eat chicken. It's not because we hate them. It's just because it's, it's food in terms of most societies perceived animals as food. It's not necessarily because they hate animals. In fact, a lot of people that farm animals do develop bonds with them and it's hard for them to kill them. Uh, whereas the Holocaust was caused by literal hate and attempt at, at ethnic cleansing a people from the face of the earth. If these halfwits cannot understand the difference 
between killing people for their race, for their ethnicity, for their gender, for their sexual orientation is different than killing for food. Now, whether... Um, Uh, eating animals is ethical or not is not the discussion here. The discussion is comparing factory farming and animal farming to the Holocaust, two different things that cannot be compared in any way, shape, or form. Because the reasons for the Holocaust are completely different than the reasons why people eat animals. Now, you can say that industrialized death is horrid, but comparing it to the most atrocious genocide on earth and calling Jews snowflakes, I was called snowflake for disagreeing. That's one of the most obnoxious and disgusting things. And you and you and you complain why people don't go vegan? Seriously. Um one of the reasons I am so passionate about going against veganism is precisely that. There was a point when I was young, I considered going vegan, but I wasn't allowed. I just started to go vegetarian and try to be vegetarian, but I was sad that I was cruel for literally being unable to oppose my parents' decisions. And um, because I was young and I'm a, from an, an abusive household and I didn't have a say in most of my food choices. But I wanted to go vegetarian at least and do my best when I was at home. But there's the vegan mentality that, you know, you have to be a purist and not do the best that you can. And as much as practicable. I think the problem with veganism is they forget the human component of their activism. And they should try to aim at you know what, we're not never going to get everyone to go vegan, but we should try to get them progressively there. And that's why they lose most of us. Because those of us that are open to it end up being repulsed by the atti attitudes of vegan activists. And there are great vegan activists that I do admire, although I do disagree with a lot of their terms and opinions, but this, this is why people don't respect veganism. And uh, seriously, I was off put by veganism for precisely these, these things. Gary Urofsky is literally a terrorist. Um, you have to understand that abolitionists shouldn't be doing terrorism, uh, or the things that they do are so extreme that they end up putting off most people from it. And in a lot of us, instead of, you know, going vegan, actually become repulsed and try to oppose veganism at all costs. Seriously, I actually, I am not vegan. Uh, I keep kosher and I don't eat uh, meat, uh, Unless, you know, it's really hard because my father already resents me and my parents resent me for not eating pork and not eating red meat. So I will eat chicken when I'm at my father's. Um, I will always try to eat only fish, but I cannot eat a, a vegan diet. Uh, um... Um, not a vegan diet. I cannot eat kosher when I'm at my father's. I do try as best as I can. But there, there's another thing. Um, even keeping kosher that includes animal products, uh, 
but don't include meat because there isn't kosher meat where I live is already a struggle with family and that that and I'm trying to keep kosher and it's already a reduction of animal products um at um because most animal products are in kosher so I will eat tuna, salmon, sardines, uh, and I'll I'll eat mostly um, legumes. But even that is causing a rift in my family, and causes a lot of arguments and discussion just because of that. Imagine going vegan, and it's a really problematic family, and that at the time. I was going, I wanted to go vegan, and I wanted help, and instead of getting help, I was ostracized for it. Now, imagine coming here and equating factory farming to the Holocaust. Millions of Jews in the world, and re remember, a lot of Jews are actually Holocaust descendants. And a lot of vegan Jews uh, who have ancestors, some of them are second generation of uh, Holocaust survivors, and they're vegan, and they see this rhetoric comparing uh, factory farming to Holocaust, and it's hurtful to them. It's not just hurtful for meat eaters and people who consume some animal products because there are those of us that don't eat meat but will eat um, fish, um, pescatarian or those of us that are la ovo-lacto-vegetarian um, and they have to endure all this because this is not just hurtful for those of us that eat animal products it is also hurtful for vegans who are jewish to be involved in this kind of uh, activism all the time and this is actually likely to and this is actually likely to make people who are actually vegan stop being vegan because of this kind of behavior. Um, because imagine being Jewish and being associated with people who are making a mockery out of the Holocaust and dehumanizing Jews by comparing them to pigs or to chickens. And um, I don't know, it's it's really upsetting. And um, this is just the tip of the iceberg because um, the rhetoric that uh, that vegan teacher has is just the start. They start by dehumanizing Jews and comparing factory farming to the Holocaust. And then they go into neo-Nazi anti-Semitic conspiracy theories about Zionism, about banks. They even call people who people who are not Jewish Jews just because they have uh, certain jobs. So we can see that vegan um, lawyer going the path uh, that freely the button girl, vegetable. Bull Police, Fully Rock Christina, um, there was another girl that was a right-wing girl, I don't remember her name. Um, she used to make videos. Then you have, uh, uh, you know, those that are around Severage and um, he used to be vegan too and he was a neo-Nazi, and uh, now he's a meat eater, just meat eater, but 
You know, these extreme diets really, and not that, a lot, I, I, I want to call out the carnivore movement, because there's a lot of anti-Semites on that too, but uh, there's just not as much on them. Um, you have Severage that really did, um, there's articles uh, about what he did in his school, but... Um, the the vegan movement draws a, a lot of Nazis and anti-Semites to it. Um, so let's. I, I'm sorry. I'm rambling. This is really bad. Um, so her name is uh, Patricia. Uh. And she is working with animal rights, uh, and she has uh, a couple of degrees. Um, but you can see the comments. Perfect all opening. Um, it's Looney Tunes all day and every day human beings living in today's Western world actually think they are more victimized than the animals who are tortured Mutilated, confined their entire lives, cut short, and only by unwatchable massacre. You want to compare animals to the most horrific genocide in history. And it's not like it was fast. The thing with factory farming, as cruel as it may be, is the animals are well fed. They have a shelter, and they're, you know, not free, but they're not forced to starve and do slave work until they drop dead from typhus or get gassed in chambers just because of their sexuality or ethnicity. It's a huge difference. Um, I don't know. These people are really, really... Um, so... Animals are beautiful people, says. Perhaps the bias is in your ugly mind. Uh, and I said to one, Armenian gen genocide is not defined as a holocaust. I often use the word to refer to Uyghur massacre by the CCP. Very different from animals. Yes, that, that's one aspect where uh, using the word holocaust is acceptable, is when referring to what China is doing to Uyghurs. Um, but comparing to animal animal farming, that's really dehumanizing. Um, um, and then I replied, says the anti-Semite, and he said, You actually think you are not an animal? What are you then, God or Satan? More of that anti-Semitic rhetoric. Seriously, vegans. If you want people to go vegan, stop, stop using Nazi rhetoric. Um, and then he says, If you had a choice, would you choose to be a female pig in tiny crates, unable to even turn around for years, forcibly impregnated over and over again, for her babies to be mutilated, massacred until she, until she herself is then just put in a death truck to be massacred herself? Or would you want to be exactly who you are, comfortable and free of and complaining about all the mean people who hurt your feelings online? Who is the real victim here? Six million Jews! You idiot! Six million Jews were killed in the most horrific massacre in history and you dare talk about piglets who live mostly well fed and contempt and never knew anything else in their lives 
So they don't really know what it is to li live another life. They're mostly content with their lives. And a lot of the things you don't know is that a lot of those animals can live free range in farms and have perfectly ha happy until they're killed. The Jewish people was separated from their families. They were they had all their things stolen. They were shipped to Auschwitz. They were forced to work hard in camps from morning to night without food, or if they had food, it would likely be moldy bread or something like that. They were malnourished, dying from typhus, being gassed, Guess what? If you had a baby, it would be gassed in con concentration camps. And you're talking about piglets? Seriously. And you're saying that who's the real victim here? Seriously. You don't... You have no clue about what you're talking about. That's so... Seriously. Yes, animal farming is bad. But it's not comparable to the Holocaust. You can't compare an animal that, yes, they are sentient, but their cognitive capacities are very limited compared to humans. And they're not being killed because they're pigs. They're being killed because people think they're food. Completely different than Jews who were killed because of their ethnicity. And by comparing Jews to pigs, in your freaking anti-Semitic comparison, you're literally dehumanizing Jews just like the Nazis were doing. And uh, yes, I did mention you, you are comparing pigs who are well-fed, housed and healthy to Holocaust victims who were abused, raped, and killed just because they were Jewish, you do not have a clue. And seriously, this is this what you call advocacy? Is this what you call activism? I call this slacktivism. And seriously, I really hope that your freaking movement rots in hell if you dare compare Jews in concentration camps to animal farming. Seriously. Unbelievable. It's 2021 and we're still dehumanizing Jews like this. This is freaking unacceptable. Vegans, get your shit together. Get your shit together. Comparing animal farming to the Holocaust is unacceptable. <sighs> Seriously, are you brain dead? How can you compare one of the hate, most heinous hate crimes to predation? Now, you can argue that predation is a bad thing, but it's not a hate crime. The Holocaust is so horrific not just because of the industrialization of death, but particularly because that death has no cause besides hate. Uh, people were not eating Jews. People were not using them for food. Although I'm not even going into the... Um... Ethics of cannibalism and how bad it would be. But if you're comparing Jewish victims of the Holocaust to food, you have a problem. You are seriously mentally ill. Seriously, you can't compare my cat eat, killing a mouse to eat because it's food to a cat killing a mouse and then just leaving her uh, to rot in the window because she just wanted to kill. 
You know, that's the difference. That's one of the major differences. You can't just, like, compare uh, a, a, an animal that kills for food to an animal that, that kills for sport. That's, it's, it's more complicated than that. But because you're literally brain dead, if you're so anti-Semitic, I think that's the best thing to compare. Like, literally, I don't understand what's in your freaking brains. If you cannot understand a hate crime from, uh, distinguish a hate crime from, uh, literally predation. <clears throat> Seriously. And then again, there is another principle. Whereas, yes, you can say that it's cruel to kill animals, but putting animals before humans is um, a violation of nature. Because even animals follow nature to some extent. Essentially, your priorities should be... Um, there's... Um, this society is sick, literally, because the first pr priority in nature is usually the self, then the family, the immediate family, then uh, people from the same community, then people from the same, you know, nation, and then other nations. And then animals. The only situation in which protecting other lives uh, can trump protecting your own, if you're a healthy human being, is protecting your offspring. And that's according to nature's, because human society has different rules, even though they go against nature. So... This is a great part of it, so this needs to stop. Stop comparing veganism and animal activism to uh, whatever. No, you cannot compare factory farming to rape. You cannot compare factory farming to the Holocaust. No, you cannot compare factory farming to slavery. As bad as killing animals for food is, those animals are not working for you. Well, you can and um, fairly say that um, using a, a horse to drive a carriage around the city is slavery. But if you're feeding a pig for months and months on end, and even years, or a bull, and then kill you for food, now, while you're taking their lives, they're not slaves. You're actually working to feed them, and not the other way around, even though later you're going to feed on them. That's not slavery. Slaves were starved. They were beaten. And they had absolutely no rights and were treated like cattle. By comparing black people, victims of slavery, to animals, you are being racist. Comparing Holocaust victims to pigs in a factory, you are being anti-Semitic. You are dehumanizing People that have been oppressed for centuries and millennia just because you cannot understand the limits of language. Because you call us sheltered, but the reality is you are freaking sheltered in your white ivory tower without any information about the world. Do you know what it is to have people telling you that they want to make soap out of the, of your grandmother and mind you at the time no one knew that i have jewish origins 
even though uh, my most recent ancestors are not Jewish. Um, I do have Jewish ancestry. But just because of the way you look or the way you talk, they assume you're Jewish and they tell you that they want to make soap out of your grandmother. Or they call you kike. Or they t say um, to take... Uh, 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 to go to a sauna or into an oven. They say the most hideous things to people of Jewish ancestry or presumed Jewish ancestry. And your lack of tact just shows how much cultural anti-Semitism still exists in our society. Now, you know, if you want to protect animals, you do you, boo, as they say. I do hate this expression, expression, but that's what they say. If you want to protect animals, fine by me. But don't use anti-Semitic terms to, uh, you know, use uh, it as a weapon. Things like, yeah, that's too bad. They think feelings matter more than bodies being chopped off. It's not feelings. Thousands of Jews lost their families. The Jewish population was literally killed to less than half the population that existed at the time. This is really serious. Which brings me to Gary Urofsky and the other, the other neo-Nazi retards that keep using anti-Semitic uh, tropes in their activism. You are part of the problem. Your slacktivism is not effective, it's hurtful, and it's dehumanizing. You're empowering Nazis. You're literally using rhetoric that pushes people to the fringes and the confines of the most rotten movements in history. Now, Christina, Christina Carrillo Bukharam is associated with one of the vilest neo-Nazis and the planet. Um, then you have, it's really bad. Then you have left wing, right wing Nazis from Angelo Gage to um, the Adam Green, uh, Morphonios, all those idiots. The internet is a cesspool of anti Semites. Now you have Freely also posting racist, anti-Semitic videos. Seriously, I've reported her video the minute it came out about BLM and um, the one t saying, you know, saying Jews control everything. I reported it and it's still online. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't think Abba Le Ciel um, is El Mazard uh, commented on this, but Vegetable poli Police used to have very anti Semitic videos too. Um, this is a scary world because the reality is. The horseshoe theory is flawed. It's not because the fringe left and the fringe right meet at the center. The fact is that the unifying factor that makes these fringe people anti-Semites is socialism. In fact, socialism is 
an anti-Semitic movement. And I do heavily recommend, recommend you study the origins of socialism. Most socialist movements emerged as a form of Catholic and pro, pro, protest, Protestant anti-Semitism. There is a great book that I do recommend. Um, where is it? Um... But yeah. Okay, so my Aldico Classic, let me see. I just hope that I can see it. The thing is, socialism emerged as an anti Semitic ideology. And no, I don't think the book is here. Um, okay, this is a book about hate crimes, but that's not this book that I wanted. Official. Uh, Let me import every file. I don't know, I just moved things from my memory card, so I may not have the books. And they keep getting this call, I already talked. So I think the book, I, I can't find it now, um, is called uh, Holy Hatred, uh, the History of Holocaust and stuff like that, um, Christianity, Holocaust, and let me see. Why is it not working? <gasps> not again. Seriously. Like, so... Like, I like talking, but sometimes, you know, when people, like, blame you for everything that goes wrong, and no matter how much you do for people, the, they accuse you of all their shortcomings, uh, and then if you try to do something for that person... Because that person is not doing enough uh, to take care of themselves. Um, they accuse you of cruelty because you don't enable them. And it's really hard because part of me wants to enable. But at the same time, I know that by enabling that person, I will make that person hurt herself. And losing her own independence. So sometimes when you love someone, you must cut them off. Because if you do everything for that person, if you care for them, and do things they should do themselves, eventually they, they lose their movement and their capacity to walk. And that's what I'm trying to avoid. Because I have... 
um, one of my parents is losing their mobility. And if I keep doing things for them, they may stop walking altogether. So they blame me for not being a good enough uh, uh, of a daughter. But I know that if I do everything for them, they will stop walking. And I know that I have enabled them in the past. And that's how they lost a lot of mobility because I would do everything they asked. But they got to a point where if I go any further, they will lose their movement altogether. Then that's why my mom is always calling me. And I want to preserve her movement. So I'm trying to cut her off and try to get her to do what she wants. But it's really hurtful because she says I'm bad, that I'm a bad daughter, that I'm ungrateful, that I torture her but all I want is for her to be independent and capable of moving and she's losing movement by the day and she needs to do things so that she's still capable of doing those things and I'm sorry to go on a ta ta tangent but yeah so this is the book there's also another cover Okay, I don't know. Let me reduce the screen light so that there is no glare. Okay, so it's Holy Hatred, Christianity, Anti Semitism, and the Holocaust. It's a very good book, and I really recommend it. Um. As for uh, Nazis and and, and uh, veganism, it's a trend that needs to stop. Um, there is already enough anti-Semitism online. We don't need any more anti-Semitism. Okay, you like Bambi, and you like Babe. It's no excuse to dehumanize Jews and minimize the Holocaust, the Holocaust, because what you're doing is Holocaust trivialization, and that's anti-Semitic, and I will always call that out. So, bye. That's it for this video. Uh, I really hope you liked the video, and I'm sorry. I didn't touch on all the points that I, I wanted to touch in the original video because I this is a response to a video that just came out and I, it's still fresh, I'm still angry, so yeah, I'll probably make another video touching on Freely and the other ones, but really do check Ezel Mazard's video, uh, it goes by Abba Le Ciel. Um, so that's it, and bye.